Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Beta Males, the ga- uh, show with the show, the game, the game show, <laughs> the game show that's all about guessing which beta game we played. And I'll give you a hit. It's by Blizzard Entertainment. And we played uh, Diablo Immortal, which is a uh, free open beta right now on um, both mobile and PC. I just played it on PC. But um, anyway, I'm your host. Me. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about is it worth even playing? We'll talk about what we liked about it, what we disliked about it. We have some very uh, differing opinions this time. And uh, I'm your host, the Mangoose. I don't know if I said that already. Joining me, as always, is the Viking Jedi. How are you doing, Viking? I'm doing great, man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, excited to talk about this game. Um, I do think we're going to have uh, some some differing opinions. I'm excited to hear what those are. Um, and then uh, joining us again is uh, the Jelly Knees. He's been uh, joining us on uh, our most recent playthrough. So uh, I'm sure he also is excited to talk about his opinions of the game so far. Go ahead, Jelly. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. I put in a ton of hours yesterday, so I'm stoked about it. And I mean, even though I won't be here every time, I'm excited to be here again. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Let's do it. Yeah, I just want to stress. I just want to reiterate that Jelly is not part of this show. He just has happened to have been on all of them that we've done. So, exactly. Diablo Immortal. Let's uh, let's let's go around. Let's start with the Viking Jedi. Do you think this is worth playing? Do you think it's worth just picking up and playing? It is free, so kind of. I mean, it, it, well, yeah, exactly. Uh, I would say I would recommend it, uh, but with an asterisk. Um, I think my recommendation comes with the understanding of what it is that you're investing in i guess um i I think that there's um a lot of things to like and dislike about the game um i think it'll come down to a lot of your your personal preference i think if you're really a big fan of diablo lore as a whole like if that's something that just interests you i would highly recommend it it does continue the story you're gonna see some of the um returning you know characters that you might have uh, fell in love with or hated in uh, previous versions um so there's something to be looking forward to in that and if you're just a you know, fan of dungeon crawlers in general, and you just like to, you know, get out there and, you know, whack things and get loot and do all that stuff. I think the game still fits that niche and and will hit that, you know, itch if you have it. Jelanese? I I think pretty much the same thing. Uh, Being free, it's hard to say, like, don't just go try it. Like, you don't have to spend any money on it. Go try it. If you like it, great. If you don't, that's cool, too. It doesn't cost anything, a little bit of your time to determine that. Um, and I think for most people, you'll get that feel very quickly of I am a fan of this or I'm not a fan of this. And then potentially a second time later on as things progress further and the grind gets a little more. Uh, for me, I made a comparison yesterday to you guys that it was kind of like Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. And that I played a lot of Lost Ark when it first came out in the in the West Coast, West Coast in the West in general um, and loved Lost Ark, right? Thought it was super fun, really cool gameplay, the whole nine yards. And then it got to the point where the grind turned into Mount Everest. Like I just, it went from, oh, you know, slight incline to just bam. Mm-hmm. And it's either grind or pay money. There you go. And I, that turned me off of the game really, really fast. And I could see the same thing happening with Diablo Immortal. I'm not quite there yet where that grind has started to do that i'm slowly seeing the incline but i haven't gotten to that point where it just mount everest on me but i could see that happening and in that case i would probably stop playing but for now i intend to continue on playing and i'd recommend other people at least try it uh me personally i disliked this game a lot um i did not feel that it was worth my time i felt that i could have spent that time better playing something else i certainly Mm -hmm. could save the disc space for something else other than this game um there were things i liked about it i mean that it's not all bad there's there's good and bad about it and we'll we'll talk about that later but for as far as i'm concerned not worth my time it's a free game still not worth downloading not worth installing not worth playing at all i would not have played it a second time if we weren't doing it for this show so that's uh you you were preloaded there you know what my opinions are of diablo immortal and um it's not even the pay to win aspect we'll get into what i dislike about it but uh first let's talk about what we liked about the game because there is some stuff to to enjoy here you two both enjoyed the game uh far more than me so Mm -hmm. uh jelly knees let's start with you what is what what, what's something that you enjoyed about diablo immortal 
so far, I, I mean, over the last six months, I've been kind of more and more obsessed with visual effects and like watching visual effects in video games. And I think theirs are pretty top notch, right? That the the spell effects all look really clean and really nice, even for a mobile game, right? I mean, honestly, their effects in this are better than some AAA effects we see on PC. So I, I give them a lot of credit there. Uh, and it feels, when you do things, it feels impactful. Like the the customization, and as you start getting into legendaries, they mo they augment and modify your spells. So I'm playing a wizard class. So one instead of shooting one beam, I shoot three beams. And like the that feeling is really good. And I think they did a good job with that. And that's probably my favorite thing, so at least that I've experienced thus far. And what about you, Mike? Yeah, uh, so I mean, I, I echo that point. I do think that the visuals, um, and we all played on PC. Like, none of us tried it on uh, mobile, right? I did so try I, it on mobile. I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I played, I, I, like, I, just a little bit. Okay, I'll be curious to see what you, what you thought about it from a mobile perspective versus just the PC. Um, see, I, I have I I do like the spell effects. I think those look really good. Um, there were parts of it though that were, and this isn't necessarily going into dislikes. While I do think the spell effects are good, I think they're good for mobile um, and porting over to PC. I think some of it is lost in translation. It's not some of like um, the UI um, pull ups and stuff like that look a little janky on you know a high definition uh, screen and from my perspective but um i did think that the spells themselves look really good i do like the um the um, minions and the monsters and how they looked uh the voiceover acting i think was probably my biggest surprise from it i didn't expect being that it's a mobile game that they would have close to full voiceovers for um i know that's not something we haven't seen in diablos in the past but being that this was a mobile game, I thought that maybe they were going to, you know, shortchange that. They did not. And and I think the voiceovers are pretty cool. Um, I, your characters all have their own voice lines, um, you know, and the customization was actually pretty good I, as well for what I wasn't expecting a mobile game to have as far as, like, how you can make your character look and stuff like that. Some of those options were pretty unique and interesting. Um and then uh, my favorite thing is the combat. I think the combat feels exactly what you'd expect for a Diablo game. Um, you want it to be interactive in the way that it is. You press button, things happen. Um, and, and I think it's pretty responsive more times than it isn't. Um, and uh, it, it hits well for what you, again, expect from a Diablo game. Yeah, the, I, I agree. The voice acting I thought was outstanding. And like, like you said, it is for mobile and it is a beta. Did not expect really good voice acting for almost every cutscene i i, I mm -hmm. personally didn't experience any cutscenes that didn't that weren't really well voice acted i didn't mm -hmm. get i haven't gotten as far into the game as you guys but i'm i'm assuming that carry that carries on mm -hmm. and um yeah i think i think for as, for a mobile game like the effects and the and just ev the just everything is top notch it's like a top notch mobile game it's not mm -hmm. the kind of game like when i play mobile i play something like hearthstone or like various little card games and stuff like that um, so like an action game, I would prefer to just sit down on my computer and play. I understand that people, not everybody has that sort of, uh, time and, uh, they might be playing this, you know, while they're commuting to work or something like that. Um, and I think it's a great game for that. If, if you are a mm -hmm. mobile gamer, this is a pretty damn good mobile game. And especially if you're used to mobile games, but, um, yeah, th there are good things about it for, for sure. Um. I think for like the voice acting side of things is Genshin Impact re revolutionized the mobile market. Mm -hmm. When that came out, it had full voice acting. It had cinematics. It had the whole nine yards in addition to all the microtransactions, but which we'll get to. Right. But, <laughs> but I think that showed that there is value in committing resources like voice actors and all that kind of stuff to mobile games to sell, to put them at an echelon above the rest and so I think it, it makes sense to me that to see a Blizzard do that same kind of thing. Yeah, hundred um, no. percent. Like you said, the combat's pretty good. I mean, it's very Diablo. It's mm -hmm. if if you enjoy Diablo, you'll you'll. Enjoy I mean, a lot this. of the abilities are one for one from Diablo three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I, that was, I mean, that's kind of leading into somewhat of a dislike, but not necessarily a dislike. I, I, it is sometimes it feels like I'm just playing an ex, like you know Diablo 3.5. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it, it's not really its own thing. It, it feels like an extension of Diablo 3. Um, but th that's not necessarily a bad thing. Diablo 3 was a great game overall. Like, I mean, it started off a little rough, then it got really good, then it kind of got rough again, uh, and then I think right now it's just in a okay standpoint for the people who are really hardcore Diablo fans. I think they're just okay with the seasons um but yeah I, I think again if you've been waiting for the story this is going to scratch your itch if you play on mobile i think this is really going to be your jam like because again it, it's supposed to be really really good on mobile in particular uh i think the pc port maybe it was a bit uh of a stretch but it's not terrible on pc it's just it's definitely a mobile game on pc yeah yeah. I think it's a response to the do you not have phones? Yep. <laughs> That's exactly what Don't you guys is. have phones? Like yeah. Well well now it's like, don't you guys have credit cards? Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so I think Mangoose, it was you that said this, but for me yesterday, right? I was kind of in a weird, like kind of chill mood, right? And I just threw on some music and just kind of zoned out and was playing mm -hmm. this game kind of mindlessly. And it was perfect. Sure. Because I it wasn't I, for lack of a better way to put it, I didn't have to think too hard. I didn't have to do a ton that like required mental power. It was just kind of do the thing, throw my abilities, get the kills, right? And then go from there. And for me, that was huge. That That's probably why I put so many hours into it yesterday is just being able to just kind of be in that Zen state playing the game, right? It was very good for that. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about boss mechanics and um, the loot progression? Hmm. Those I are mean, two very I, different questions, but <laughs> sure. I, so, I mean, I, I know uh, Jelly's farther along than I am. Um, I do think that the the few bosses have been what I would expect almost all Diablo games at this point, or dungeon crawlers in general. Like they're they got mechanics for sure. Um, visually, I think that they look really cool. Um, and there's one of the first dungeons that you'll do um, where uh, I don't want to give spoilers for people who haven't played, but you, you'll be surprised by the level at which they designed uh, some aspects to become, you know, to interact with the boss. Like, um, and I, I think that was really, really cool. I liked that aspect. I liked that they were, you know, coming at this with a different thing. It wasn't purely just let's take Diablo three content and put it into a mobile game. They did expand, they did add new things. And I thought that was uh, really fun. Um, I, I wasn't necessarily overly challenged by any of the mechanics so far. Granted, I'm not as crazy into the game as, as others might be. But um, I, I think what I enjoyed the most was being able to fairly quickly get grouped up and do those boss encounters, um, seeing the different spell effects and all that stuff while also not being overwhelming. I think they layered the the different spells. All your spells look really dynamic. Other people's spells, unless it's like a big spell, will look a little bit less so. Um, so it's not too overpowering uh, visually, which I think is smart, especially again for a mobile game. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed the, the combat with fighting bosses and encountering world bosses. It just felt very Diablo. It felt exactly what you'd expect from Diablo. Not necessarily overpowering but also still interesting and neat that you didn't hate doing it you know yeah uh for bosses i would completely agree i think there hits a point where the the challenge i guess from like main story bosses versus side quests where they have uh challenge runs that you can do mm -hmm. right i think the challenge runs become more of the you're looking for a challenge you need to play this right you need to manage your distance you need to manage your spells you need to do those things so if you really want to try hard there's challenge runs and then just the main story is just the right amount of difficulty for where you're at assuming you're progressing with the story as you're supposed to as it expects you to i guess i should say um so for that aspect i think it's basically right on point for what i would expect with it with a diablo game uh what about you mangoose on the bosses aspect I thought the couple bosses I did were pretty cool. It was, it was nice to see Leoric and him using like Entomb and stuff like that. Um, that, By the way, that's probably one of the few things I really, really liked about the game is they introduced Heroes of the Storm characters into the lore. Mm -hmm. Because the Heroes of the Storm like characters like Zul and Vala and um, like, like Butcher and Leoric, of course, they were already named. But a lot of the ones like Sonya, the ones that were just based on classes from Diablo... Mm -hmm. They 
they didn't have a name. They gave them names for Heroes of the Storm. It was kind of right. cool to see them get inserted into the lore with Diablo Immortal. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm you, a huge uh... Heroes of the Storm fan. I love that game. Yeah, you like exclaim, you're like, oh, and then you're like excited <laughs> about getting to, to, you know, interact and fight them. Um, and I think a lot of people will feel the same way that, that that transition from Blizzard, right, of keeping things linear is always something they're pretty strong at. And I, again, I do think that Blizzard hit well, the devs did well on creating a good game. The game itself, the mechanics of the game, I feel like a Diablo game and uh, and the boss is are no exceptions. The combat feels relatively good overall again i think as you get farther in the combat gets even better as you you know add more spells and stuff like that into your your kit um how did you guys feel with the combat like being fairly small as because again we're looking at mostly mobile so you only really have the four slots for your spells i know there was a few moments for me um and this isn't necessarily dislike or like but there was like where i had to make a hard decision on which four spells I'm wanting to commit to once I had unlocked more. Um, whereas in previous, I think Diablos, you had obviously access to a few more spell slots and so forth. What did you guys feel about that? I mean, it makes sense, especially for mobile. And um, even in regular Diablo, you couldn't equip every single spell that you right. have at your disposal. Uh, you still had to make that hard decision. And I think uh, forcing gamers to make a hard decision like that is one of the things that makes a game fun. Um, mm -hmm. And them doing it at a fairly low level, fairly, uh, I, th I think that's a good thing. I, I have no problems with with that whatsoever. Yeah, I think for the wizard class, like I said, that's the one I've been playing. Is there are basically like predefined sets that you can definitely see the synergy between them, right? And so it's, it's basically it's sitting there going like, okay, I want these four because they all work together. I want these four because mm. they all work together. You're pretty defined for the wizards, at least, of which, like, if what your play style is, if you enjoy this, then you'll want these four spells. Um, there's an aspect of choice to that, but for the most part, that's what it seems to be. And I think it's, for like, like Mangu said, for a mobile game, it makes sense to be as limited as that is. And it helps simplify the game a little bit, where you're mm -hmm. not worried about eight cooldowns. Now you're just worried about the main four and your basic attack or ultimate, depending. Uh, now, are you guys ready to get into unloading on this game about what we don't like about it? Because I've been holding myself back this entire time. <laughs> I, I have one. I have one more quick like to throw in there because I think it is important, um, at least for PC players. Uh, is you can adjust keybinds right away. Um, I know for me, I adjusted my keybinds almost immediately. I put some on my thumb buttons um, and so forth. I wasn't sure you were going to be able to do that for, again, it being mostly a mobile game, if they were going to have that as an aspect. So quality of life thing, you know, whether it was small or big or not for them to be able to add it. I personally was really excited to be able to change some of those keybinds and make it a little bit more user friendly for me. But yeah, that's the only final thing I have as far as uh, as likes. <laughs> that, yeah, that is a good thing. I've heard good things about controller support too. I've heard the controllers oh, okay. work really well with the game. Um, if, if, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I'm sure people mm -hmm. will be like, "Yeah, no, 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 I didn't think." <laughs> you know, but from what I hear, it's it's set up pretty well. And um, yeah. I did like the option of either right click movement or WASD movement. I thought mm -hmm. that was pretty well pretty do well done. And you mentioned earlier loot progression, mangoose. And I think oh, yeah. the loot progression for where I'm at is actually really good. Is it made like, I mean, I, Viking and I both thought we were getting items that were already legendaries. And at mm -hmm. first I was kind of like upset about that. I was like, we got a lot of these really fast, mm -hmm. right? Like I, the first one dropped, I was like, oh, sick, a legendary, like, let's go. And then it was like yeah. another one and another one and another, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Do these actually have value anymore? And then it turns out there's a whole other tier that is actually the actual legendaries. And those you earn definitely slower, but it's at a good pace. It's at it like I've got currently five legendaries uh, on my person out of nine slots, 10 slots. And what level 40, are you? 40 something, 44, okay. 45. Yeah. Um, and I got those gradually one at a time and each one has a unique effect that changes your abilities somehow mm -hmm. and then that you then can start building and you go like okay i want this legendary and this legendary and together they help make my kit more powerful or they they make that progression feel more worthwhile than just 
oh look i do a little bit more damage right and having there's a bunch of different legendaries i've gotten four chess pieces right and each one has a different effect and so then it's choosing this one is slightly better with stats but this one benefits the spell that i like to use and trying to have that like you said earlier mangoes the the decision mm -hmm. right adds a little bit of fun to it and i think that's it's really good for where it's at at least up to the point that i'm at right now <laughs> yeah right because i i again know that it, it theoretically everest at some point yeah i i felt the same way about the loot uh i know for me like today while me and jelly were messing around um i got my first uh legendary gem and uh slotted that into my weapon and it gave me um like an energy a thing that as you run around or do damage, uh, it'll eventually send out like a lightning chain. Uh, and that felt really good. I'm playing as a Crusader class, so I'm doing a lot of melee anyway. So being able to add more AoE to my kit was was really exciting. Um, and uh, so I do, I'm excited for that. I don't remember that being in Diablo 3 as something that they necessarily did um, with the, the gems and so forth. Um, again, someone in the comments can correct me or one of you guys can chime in, but... Uh, because it was forever ago that I played that game. It feels like so long. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that felt really good. I was really excited, which is always what you want when you get a new thing and you want to use it and it feel immediately impactful. And I did right. feel that with the with the gem. So again, that's another, another plus, um, which is why my recommend is kind of like in the middle. Like I'm not necessarily hard thumbs up. You need to play this game like I was with V Rising. Um, and I'm not necessarily like a full on, this is, you know, don't put it onto your, your PC at all or onto your mobile phone. It's kind of like, again, in the middle area. But yeah, I'm ready to jump into the dislikes unless- Mangus, Yeah, now can I go? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mangus. He, Mangus, guys, he's so excited to tell you about the things that okay. are wrong with this game. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna see people all like talking about how it's pay to win and all this. I didn't even experience that. Like the, as much as I played it, I did not experience any sort of pay to win. I didn't feel that I needed to pay at any time. What pissed me off was this fucking mobile UI where I need to claim, go here and claim this and then claim this. <laughs> And then claim this, and then go over here and claim this, and then I just finished a quest. Well, that unlocked part of my blah, blah, blah. So I need to go over and claim that part. It's like, oh my fucking God, can I not just play the goddamn game and get my equipment and move along? And then mm -hmm. every time, like, I, I'm one of those people that, like, if, if, like, I have a little blinking light that says that I have, like, a new skin or something, like, I have to hover over it and, yep. and make it go away. Constant, like... Here's this blinking light. Oh, I hit the claim. Oh, here's this free one-time offer of 99 cents for the bundle, blah, blah, blah. Like, get the fuck out of my game with this shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I just... And then the other thing is, I just didn't feel that Diablo Immortal did anything, like, better than what's already out there. Like, sure. the way I felt was, I could just as easily play Path of Exile, which is free. Or mm -hmm. I could... I, I bought Diablo 3 a long time ago. I could just play Diablo 3. Like, mm -hmm. I could play Torchlight. There's a lot of AARPGs out there that I could play that do things in a different way and do things better than other RPGs and, and provide a new experience. This was not a new experience other than it being a mobile experience. So, again, mobile gamers, yeah, maybe. But I'm not a mobile gamer, and I cannot fucking... One of the reasons I'm not a mobile gamer is I cannot stand that shit. Mm -hmm. Of having daily unlocks and it's like a fucking task whenever you lo whenever you open up your phone like I've got to go here then before I play anything I gotta go here and then I gotta go here and then I gotta go here and then I gotta go here and oh my god it just I absolutely hated it could not stand playing the game <laughs> and for better or for worse we said it before right but for better or for worse it's Diablo three with microtransactions like it's it, yeah for if you really love Diablo three then there's a chance you'll like this. Mm -hmm. but there's microtransactions, right? Like it's, and that that's the added caveat to every aspect of this. Every time you kind of come out of a dungeon, it's like a limited one-time offer for you. I do not care. Thank yep. you. Right, and I, I get why they're doing it, right? They So I looked it up while we were talking uh, just a minute ago. They made $800,000 in the first 24 hours that the game was live. Which is Ugh. disgusting. That makes me not. I'm, I'm changing my thing to thumbs down. <laughs> Do not play this game. Um, I, well, because I'm a big supporter of you know, t vote with your money, right? Like you know, do, when it comes to these games, like 
there's some aspects like I don't mind all microtransactions. Like so, we, we talk about the fact that I play League of Legends a lot. I know Jelly's played it a lot. I, I've probably spent a few hundred dollars at this point on skins. It's cosmetics. It's and and this is the thing that I like about League of Legends is that it doesn't beat you over the head with hey come spend your money. Hey come spend your money. No no we're gonna make you a cool product. The game itself is going to be good. I mean for better or worse good. League of Legends is one of those things. Uh, it, but they. Yeah, I just can't stand that, you know, this whole mobile market. Uh, and it's been something that's been a, a pretty, you know, slow creep, I think, for, for a long time. It's just now breaking into, you know, to the PC space. And I think the people who have been mostly either console or PC gamers haven't maybe really been interacting with it. But, like, my daughter has grown up with an iPad or her iPhone in her face pretty much her her most of her you know adolescent to teenage life so she's very much accustomed to oh dad that's only 99 cents who cares or oh it's only this why who cares and i'm like no dude like it starts off that way next thing you know you've spent 50 dollars on a free to play game like you could have just bought a triple a game from gamestop for that same amount of money like what, what are you doing and but that's how they do it and that's the part where i think i really struggle is it's the predatory nature of it all mm -hmm. they 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 feed on the I need to clear that notification. And, and the thing that pisses me off the most about this one isn't so much that it's just that they literally make it part sometimes of your quest line to advance. You have to click on it. And that is a, hey, we've got, you know, this battle pass version, you're on this battle pass version. Like, and you have to actually interact and click on those things, which to me, again, is just so predatory. It's just really unnecessary it's like just make a good game and people will want to support you that like to me that's the way i look at it if you're not making a good game which i don't think that diablo immortal is a bad game it's a mobile version of diablo 3 which is fine there's a market for that but you don't need to crush your your new player base under this but what do i know they made eight hundred thousand dollars in the first 24 hours so obviously they know what the fuck they're doing it's just pissing off us old guys who hate that shit and just want games to be games instead of fucking money making machines yep uh, it bothers the shit it's, out of me yeah i just got re-pissed off all over again <laughs> there's there's an aspect to it that i kind of wish it would go back to the old mobile uh ecosystem which yeah. was you can play the game for free, but there's ads and micros and all these things. Or you pay $5 and then we remove that stuff out of your face. Sure. I would pay $5 to remove all that stuff out of my face in this game. Yeah, right. right. Like, Probably. Because would, 100%. Yeah. Right. I would give them my $5 just to say, make it go away. Even if it's still in the game, make it go away. And then if I'm interested, I will seek it out. Mm -hmm. I will go find the thing that I'm looking that you want me to buy. Right. I would do that in a second because I've enjoyed the game thus far, but that is that is the thing that gets, and it's it's the constant reminder of, no, I'm not going to spend money, right? If if I've developed the hard wall of I'm not going to spend money on this game, right? It's the constant re pissed off of stop asking me to spend my money, yeah. Like let me get a toggle that says do not ask me again, do not, whatever it is, right? Like I realize that makes them less money, so they would never do that, but that, going that to, it's yeah. a constant cycle back and forth back and forth back and forth uh I, and to go back to what mangus was saying the mobile ui thing oh. pisses me off beyond all reason <laughs> I hate because it. the the work is already done right you develop the ui mobile or not right you develop the ui so the functionality of of icon goes here a health bar goes here item drop goes here whatever whatever quest menu all that stuff already exists all that logic exists all you need to do is reskin it for the PC market, and which is the easiest thing you could probably do in the mo in the vast majority of the development cycle, mm -hmm. and you didn't even do that, and that I have no forgiveness for <laughs> at all. That like that is pure laziness, especially from Blizzard, right? If this was some indie company that then came out with a mobile game, they also simul released on PC, and then they immediately said like, "Hey, we're working on it, a PC UI." Please be patient with us. I'd be I'd be a little more forgiving. Sure. But this is Blizzard. Blizzard absolutely has the people to develop a PC UI and make it more accessible that way. And they just chose not to. Right. 
I mean, it's not like they didn't even know that people wanted to play this game on PC. Literally on their announcement, you know, when the whole do you guys even have phones came out, the, the first few questions were all about PC. Like, wait, do you not have plans to make this for PC? So they knew that the market was there that the, and they were realistically, especially with things, how have they changed for Blizzard? They were going to have to do something to try and get as many people playing this game. Otherwise, it would be a failure. I, uh, I, yeah, I can't stand the UI. The UI just looks garbage. And this is the thing. So I went into my, my wife's computer to, uh, you know, mess with it and see if I could, her UI looks totally different than mine. Some of her aspects like are way more blown up. And so they're, I don't think they're even consistent against, uh, across different, you know, PCs and different, um, monitors. I think it, it, the native, cause she's on a, I don't know what all this stuff, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It, it looked way worse on her her computer than it did on mine and i was like what the heck and i tried to go into the settings and see if we get nothing dude i don't understand how they don't have they did it for the mini map you know like hey make this smaller make this bigger whatever even if it's still the the, the ui version that's given to you from mobile if i could just make it a little bigger or make it a little bit smaller that that alone would be good like the quest thing dude it constantly is just like if you have more than two quests it gets cut off or the text message is a little bit long it gets cut off you can't always tell which quest you're even actually doing and which one's part of it it's just yeah, on dog PC, it's like size 36 point font yeah it's which is unnecessary it's so like, bad having a slider i would take a slider i can call this <laughs> 50 percent right where where it's at currently 50 percent yeah let me slide it down to zero get the even smaller than that and the UI wouldn't bother me as much. But the fact mm -hmm. that it takes up, honestly, I should I should have done the, the pixel measurements before this. But I would I would wager a guess it probably takes 40% of your screen up with just their UI. Mm -hmm. And that's that's too much. In 2022, that is far, far, far too much. Exactly. At this point in in gaming development, there's no excuse. I, I, especially again from a triple A company like you know, like Blizzard is. Ugh, it's so yeah. frustrating. You were talking about accessibility, but I want to talk about a different type of accessibility. Like back in the 2000s, um, this was a big thing with Blizzard in particular with World of Warcraft was player accessibility. Should all players be able to have access to all parts of the game? Because a big part of World of Warcraft was in order to access some of the late game stuff, you had to have like a 40 man raid. Not everybody mm -hmm. could put together a 40 man raid, that, that sort of thing. So Blizzard decided that they wanted to make their game entirely accessible to all players so that you have stuff like LFG looking for raid or LFR looking for raid, or whatever. So everybody, mm -hmm. it, it may be a slightly dumbed down version of the in game, in game content, but everybody was able to access every part of the game that blizzard made with world of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. They've swung around now to where they've blocked accessibility to certain features of their game behind money. Now, not yep. skill, not, not your social graces of being able to put a, a team together, but behind how much money you make and your and how much disposable income you have. That is bullshit, and I fucking hate it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess it's just legendary gems and gear and stuff. Uh, but still, if anything is available to players who pay versus the players who don't pay, you know, sell cosmetics, do something. I don't, I really don't know. I just think it's so shitty that they've gated content behind how much disposable income you have. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, it, and, and it's content that people that don't have that disposable income will fucking pay for anyway. And then they're going to not pay their electric bill or some shit like that. I'm getting way too far in the weeds with this. <laughs> I, I think it's a valid point, though. Yeah, go ahead. I've hit, I've hit the point in the game, right, at 45, whatever I said I was, right, that I'm starting to see what I believe is the base of the mountain. Right, where it's, I'm not 100% certain that that's what it is, but I'm at the point where the main storyline quest says that I need to be higher level. It literally just tells me you need to be level 46 to do the next main storyline quest. I've had that happen to me three times where I wasn't high enough level, but I've been doing all the side quests I can do. I've been doing all of the uh, like little dungeons that they have. I've done all of those things multiple times over, even probably above the skill level that I should be doing them at because I'm playing them slow and trying to get through that by myself. Right. So I'm, I'm theoretically ahead of where I should be on the curve. And it's still telling me that I'm not high enough level to continue with the main story quest. On top of that, the daily quests that you can get like on the bounty board, those are not tied to your progression in the main story quest. Those are daily resets. You can do eight of those a day and that's it. So you hit those eight, 
great. Now what are you going to go do for your levels? You have to either go out and grind in the area that you were last in, and who, who knows how long that's going to take to get to that next level so you can continue the main story quest, or you have to go do dungeons 500 times over again. Or, you know what? You could pay money. You can get the XP boost. You can get the... the and so this is... Like I said, I think I'm starting to see the base of the mountain, right? Where it's it's at the point where I can say either, oh, I've done my dailies, put it away for the day, right? And then I'll come back tomorrow, do my dailies, and maybe five days from now, I'll get high enough level to go do the next story quest. Or I can pay the 99 cents to get an XP boost, go do a single dungeon, and then I can continue with the main story quest now. And it's just 99 cents, Jelly. It's not even a dollar. It's just 99 cents. Don't you guys have phones? <laughs> um but, but that's, so I'm starting to see that. And like, for me, I've kind of gone into this with the, like, I am not spending money on this game, right? The, the most, and, and I mean the most I would spend is I would buy the battle pass if I complete it first. And if I plan on continuing the game after the fact, right? So it, it's, and it, that's, it, that'd be $5 and I'm done. And that's the most. I'm not going to buy these 800% value 99 cent packs weirdness <laughs> that they're, trying to push on me i'm not gonna buy levels i'm not gonna buy any of that kind of stuff right but the fact that at level 40 they're already what well, i feel the gates start closing down on me mm -hmm. right where it's and so i'll be the guy that like okay i've done my eight daily quest today i did my challenge run all right i'll put the game down i'll come back tomorrow like if i'm going to continue playing playing the game because I'm, I'm not spending the 99 cents every time they level gate me like this to yeah. try and push through it and I, yeah, and I have no problem spending money on games like right. Paragon. Fine example. I got into Paragon for free via the beta. I love that game so goddamn much that I bought the $90 founders pack just to support Epic Games in their production of Paragon. Um, mm -hmm. Here's the storm. Another example. I've bought skins and mounts in, in that game. Not particularly because I wanted the mount. I mean, I did want the skin or I did want the mount, but it was mainly because I had zero problem giving them money for Heroes of the Storm because I enjoyed Heroes of the Storm so much. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything as enjoyable enough about Diablo Immortal for me to ever spend money on it. No, I, I think really what this is preying on, and uh, and I know this is going to get thrown around too, is it's not just pay to win, it's gamble to win. And I think that that's why it, it's going to be successful is it's going to itch those people who are in this space, especially the mobile gamers who are used to this kind of content. They're, they're, it's a gamble. Like, oh, I have a chance. It's not even I'm paying because like, that's the thing. If they were just like, oh, if you can spend $10 and we're going to give you this legendary sword, some people would buy it. Absolutely. But it's the it's the idea that it's a chance. Oh, you can get all these blue or purple items, and then there's a chance at that legendary one. And that chance is what you're paying for, or you can increase the chance for that legendary. Cause that's, and that's what these are praying for. And, and I, I, I hate that. I hate predatory, um, you know, mechanics and games. And I think it feels skeezy. Uh, again, I, I agree. If we, if the game is good, I don't mind supporting it. Like that's just the truth. I've played lots of free to play games and sometimes it's just like, you know what? Let me throw the devs some money. Like there's, this is a good game. I want to support them. I mean, like I said, with Riot, I, Riot at one point was a relatively small company. I didn't mind supporting them because I enjoyed their game. I thought that they did the game well. Um, I, I know a lot of people are who uh, do a uh, path of exile. They spend a decent amount of money on that. I don't think there's like, really hardcore pay to win things in there i know most of it's cosmetic and you can get into arguments about whether cosmetics are pay to win in in certain types of games but like i think the most pay to win they have for poe is like the slots you can buy extra slots for your or for um your stash or something like that which maybe is pay to win uh i, I just the fact that you even have to have a conversation on whether or not like you have the dev putting on, out on Twitter and doing um, Reddit posts about it defending their version of a microtransaction microtrans store and how it's not pay to win because you're not buying gear directly. No, you're buying the gem that enhances your gear or you're buying the, 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 the gem that allows you to go into a raid or dungeon and then get increased chances of getting the gear. And so it's, it's still pay to win but you're gambling for that win instead of just paying for it right out. And and I, I hate it. I hate that skeeziness. I hate that's where we are getting to in this gaming industry um, where, you know, a company like Blizzard 
is looking for any way to maximize profit margins. Um, and I, to be honest, and, and this is me not trying to sound xenophobic, but I don't think that they're even worried about North American audience for that. I think that they're looking for, you know, the, the Eastern countries that are going to be really facilitating that because it's a lot more acceptable in those regions like, you know, China and Korea to name two that pay to win or pay for access, pay to speed up or whatever is fully understood. I mean, and, and, and you can see it in a lot of the games that come out of those regions and it's a massive, massive market, especially in, in China. So I have bad news for you. Oh, okay. Is it of all 800,000? Is it all NA? 55% of it was the United States alone. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about then. You know That's what? crazy. <laughs> you know what? That, that actually surprises me. You know what kind of shocks me is Blizzard engaging in something like this when their ethics are already heavily in question. Money. <laughs> and, and the thing, too, it Hearthstone is also pay to win. It's pay to win as fuck. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem as egregious because it's a trading card game. And that's how actual physical trading card games work. You go yeah. out and buy a pack of cards. You have no idea what's inside that pack of cards. And sure. you open them up. So it doesn't seem as bad in Hearthstone for some reason, but um, God, in Diablo, where it's they're they're taking that sort of approach and then adding it into a game like Diablo and making Diablo pay to win. I mean, they tried it with Diablo three, right? With the uh, with the real money auction house and yep. the fucking that shit did not work out, and then they brought it back for this one. Isn't there a real money auction house in Diablo Immortal? Immortal? I think so. Yeah, I think so. That's yeah. what everybody's going to be calling it. Well, and I think there's like, so part of the, um, and there's other creators that have put out lots of videos about this already. Like Bellier, I think did a really, really good job of like, you know, going and doing some deep dives on it. And um, we were talking about it earlier today about like the estimated amount that you would need to spend to fully maximize is in the hundreds of thousands of range. So like $110,000, $120,000. Uh, if you're not looking to use any monetary, then if you're going to play the game, let's say like how Jelly is, like you get to a point, you do your dailies, whatever, you take your percentage chances, you're free to play. Could take you theoretically up to like 10 years to be able to get access to the, the, to the final stuff. I will say with a, with a caveat to this, right? As much as these things are more annoying and I don't want to support them, they are really only going to impact your average player in PvP. So if you're not looking to play PvP necessarily, you're probably not going to feel necessarily like you're missing out on any power. I think you'll get to a point in the end game where you're able to do most of the stuff and you just get to a point where you just stop playing because you've beaten the game quote unquote but if you're looking at pvp and you go up against you know what they switched it from whales to krakens now because that's how much they're spending um so they're no longer just whales yeah so if you go up against a guy who just spent you know five thousand dollars to maximize you know his opportunities and you're playing in pvp you can just get pooped on it's gonna be it's gonna feel shitty, but they won't care. What they're gonna do is bank on the you know like Clash Royale or Clash of Clans. Oh, if I need to spend ten dollars so I can compete with that guy, I need to throw my wallet at the problem. They won't blame Blizzard. They're gonna pull. They're gonna blame the fact that they didn't spend enough money, and that's how these games continue to take advantage of people. I'll, is that's the mindset they get into. I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of PVP objective as part of the main quest line too. Oh my god! <laughs> so that you have to go in and PVP at least once. So I'm sure they will. Yeah, and you'll just get Goomba. I, I haven't gotten to it yet, but I think I'm on the cusp of yeah. getting it. Um, and, and another thing that I've thought of is there are eight-man raids in Diablo Immortal. Mm -hmm. um, you discover them through part of the main story quest, right? And then you, you do like a mini version of one by yourself. And then it says like, okay, if you want to do the next one, you got to do full eight-man raid. And you have to be at the 420 gear score in order to go into the raid at all. You can't even like try to do it lower. Mm -hmm. uh, when they introduce that to you, you're about 320 to 350 in gear score. And that next, that next hundred, I mean, I'm at 410, I think right now, gear okay. score. And that, but that was, that was a bit of a grind. Like it was not, it wasn't like a couple, two hours later. And I was like, oh, there we go. I'm really close to like being able to get the thing or being able to go do this eight man raid. It's, it's a bit of a challenge. You have to go out there. You have to do the main story quest. You have to do all the dailies. You have to do the challenge runs. You have to do all of these things. And that's still four or five hours 
of playtime to get to the 410 mark. I'm not even at the 420 mark yet. I'm not even at the point where I can do that. And then you have to have seven other people that you can do it with or LFR basically mm -hmm. into a random group and hope that they don't flame you for being exactly 420 when you go into this raid because I'm sure people are going to be higher. Sure. Right? And it's another it's another place where it's like, well, I really want to do that raid. Should I just spend the dollar? Should I just spend the five dollars to oh, it's fucking to help boost myself to get that gear score a little bit faster to go do <laughs> the raid? It's fucking insidious. I hate it. Yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, I mean, like, there's a part of me, like, so uh, I'm a, a World of Warcraft player back in the day. Like, I started in vanilla and went all the way up, and uh, I think I stopped the first time uh, in Cataclysm. So when Cataclysm was about to come out, I was like, okay, I don't want to play this game anymore. And uh, and I've come back a few times because it's just, it's wow. It's, like, nostalgic for me. And there's the, every, every cinematic makes me go, like, ooh, I could come back. I could come play, you know? And uh, But I, I just... <laughs> I don't mind there being like an end game quote unquote grind. Like I don't mind like you need to like do, you know, five or six dungeons consistently to get the, the gear that you need to be able to move to the raid. And then you need to do that raid enough times to get the gear to go you know, to the next version of the raid. I don't necessarily mind that. That, that. I think that's an end game progression that's pretty common in most, you know, RPGs or MMORPGs. So it, that part into itself is not an issue. It's when you feel like you're being artificially held back where like i know in wow it was like this and i think it's it's going to show itself in diablo is that you can only do so much in one day and then your progression to play is 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 therefore stopped so you're not going to be able to do if i could just like if i'm the of the mindset that i'm going to just run this one dungeon 50 times and gear up and level up and then i'll be fine to go into the raid then people will do that. But the thing that's going to stop them is I get, I feel like it's going to happen. Is like, oh no, you only get the six runs. And if you don't get all this stuff, if you're not lucky enough to get it in those six, well, then you got to come back tomorrow and then you can only do six. And then you're going to come back tomorrow or, or you can spend a dollar. You can spend $5 and we'll reset that for you. And you can do another run. And, and that's where I feel like it's going to, because they did it for a while where you could only do so much in your dailies to be able to start unlocking flying. For example, like you have to, do a reputation grind but you can't just go and grind it you can only do so much in a day because there's only so many dailies and i fucking hate that i hate a game that's stopping me from playing your fucking game like why would you i just don't understand it and it's exactly for those things those predatory reasons to time gate players so they keep coming back day after day you know what? if you make your game good i'm gonna come back like that and that's the part that gets me it's like these they make these games almost lazier on purpose so that you have to come back each time they make it just good enough for you want to play it but you can't play it the amount that you want to play it. You can't no life it and get farther. Well, there's a currency called hilts, which is oh. the hilts that you get naturally by doing quests and doing dailies and, and all those things. You can spend the hilts on some of the premium aspects of it, right? So in the challenge runs, they have little crests that you can get. They have basic crests and they have legendary crests. Legendary crests give you better rewards, more rewards when you do the challenge run. Uh, you can use your hilts to buy a legendary crest. To so you, great, that's fine. That's that's something I can earn in game, pay for in game with no, no real money. That's fine. You can only do that once a week. <laughs> so I get one legendary crest a week because I refuse to spend money on the game. I right. have another one. I don't remember what the actual thing was. You spend the hilts on. It's once a month. It straight up says monthly purchase, and then it's zero out of one after you do it. And that's it. You you get one for the month, and then next month you have to come back and buy it again if you wanted to get it without paying any real money. So I guess I, I you know I'm I'm fully in the in the mangoose camp at this point. I, as much as I actually think that the uh the game is fun to play, this is the part. Like I like the parts that I like. Right, I like Diablo. I like the lore. I like the the voiceovers. I like the graphics. I like the, all of those things. But I think I'm just to the point where I'm so pissed off with these these companies doing this kind of shit that I'm just like, you know what? I, I don't want them to get me as an active user. I'm, they weren't going to get my money in the first place. But right now, I'm giving them a metric. Right? Hey, they, there's this. And I know I'm one of at this point millions. But I'm wondering. I mean, if enough people say, you know what? Enough is enough. This type of shit is done. There's not enough whales or krakens to keep the game alive. It's the people that are still logging in every day and spending just a little bit or not spending anything at all, but still adding to those numbers that generate their ability to make this a successful launch, a successful game. 
I, I think I'm going to uninstall it, actually. Now, the more that we've talked about this, the more pissed off I've gotten about this kind of shit. And I'm just... No, Blizzard has been burning my bridge for a long time. Like, yeah. and, and that sucks because they're one of my staple games. I remember the first time I downloaded Warcraft. Like, old Warcraft. The RTS. Like, I, I loved that game. Job's done. One of my favorite things, dude. I loved it. And, you know, and I played all of them. I played Warcraft 1, 2, 3. And then I played Starcraft. I, I played Diablo 1, 2, 3. I, I don't know. I don't know what we else we can do. I, I mean, making content like this. I know a lot of the big creators are out there making their content about it and trying to do it. But at the end of the day, the masses need to stand up and say, we're not doing this. We're not supporting these types of games. Blizzard, you need to do better. You know, EA, you need to do better. You know, Bungie, you need to do better. Like, because otherwise, it's just going to keep being catered to this specific style and we're going to get outrun. We're going to be there. Nope, this is how games are now. It started with like games like Genshin Impact making the mainstream. Another one now, Lost Ark hitting the mainstream. And you saw some of those transactions showing up in other types of games. Maybe not to the same level that they are right now, but they're definitely in, in a lot of other games. Lost World had a few that were like, oh, that's a little questionable. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there's, uh, or New World, not Lost World. New World had a few of those like questionable eyebrow, eyebrow raises that they eventually pulled out when they got the backlash. I don't know, man. I'm, I know I'm rambling at this point. I'm just pissed. I mean, that's... So we... When we were downloading it yesterday morning, uh, we all got on, and then Viking, your wife, was also with us. Yeah. And I, when I was first downloading it, it, was before we got in a call together. I remember like going to download the game. And it's like you need Battle.net, and I was pissed. Yeah. Because I uninstalled Battle.net. I don't even know. <laughs> ago, years ago, and never thought back. Never once was like maybe I download one of these games. Nope. Never went back to it. And then this was the thing that made me download Battle.net again. I was already pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> downloading battle net was enough and then we got on a call yesterday and your wife said the same thing like yep. like oh i have to download battle net and i was like yep like like that was that the fact that blizzard has sullied it so far that just downloading their launcher makes people upset <laughs> is ridiculous like that's yeah. that's a well, whole other level blizzard of, used to make games for gamers oh, yeah. now they make money from everyone yep. yep that's just what it is and they're not even doing BlizzCon, so they don't even have to spend money anymore. They just... <laughs> they're tired of being booed at their own conference. Let's just be honest. Don't you guys have phones? What the Dude, fuck's Red Shirt guy going to do? Oh, God. <sighs> oh, is, Overwatch, is Overwatch too good? Do we know? <laughs> what is Blizzard Overwatch really have? With one less person. It's what now? It's Overwatch 1 with one less person. Oh, really? Who did they, they take out? They instead of six person teams, it's five person. Oh, teams. five person. I thought you said that. I, I thought you, they took out a character. I know they renamed um, McCree, right? Because he was one of the guys, uh, the developers that was in that whole scandal. So they yeah. changed his name to something else. I don't know what they changed it to. Probably Scott or something like that. You know? <laughs> Beatrice. <laughs> his name is Cole Cassidy. Oh yeah, that's Cole, a Cole Cassidy. Yeah, that's a, that's a name. Um. I don't honestly I don't have any more. I'm pissed. I'm I just got more pissed than I was. Thank you guys for making me angry. Luckily I've been drinking this whole time, so I'm I'm happy from that. Um do you guys have any uh a final thoughts? Have you changed your mind, Jelly, at, at all? Are you still a recommend? Are you still a thumbs up on this one? Or have you come to the thumbs down gang like me and Mangoose? I, I think it's one of those if you want to try it, try it. Like I said, it's free. Yeah. Right? Just go into it. And kind of have a thought process going in, which I think is what I did, of like, I'm not spending money. Like, I'm just not doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Annoyance of getting pinged all the time from it, fine, right? But just stick to your guns. Don't spend the money. When you hit that Mount Everest point, have no problem just being like, and that's it. It was fun while it lasted. I'm out. And that's kind of where I was at with Lost Ark. Right? Yep. I really, really enjoyed the game. I hit the Everest point and went, okay. Like I got, I got my enjoyment out of it. It was free to play, even though I paid for the the early access. Early access, right? right. But but I got my enjoyment out of it. I'm good. I'm happy to step away now and move on to something else that isn't going to scalp me for my money at every moment. <laughs> Mangus, yeah. are you double thumbs down now? Are you are you I still mean, the single thumb? <laughs> I'm still the same same thumbs down as ever. I just, <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of other AARPGs cheese out there that you can play and i suggest you play them instead of even fucking with the Diablo immortal but yeah i don't know that, is that going to close it out does anybody have any final statements before we sign off here 
I think I'm the part that pisses me off. Is, it's like when you talk to your kids. I, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. But it's both, to be honest. I am disappointed and angry, man. Like I just like I'm dis because the part of the game that is good is good, right? Like I love Diablo. I love the lore. I, we talked about this, the voiceovers. I think for a mobile game coming to PC, they can absolutely make some changes. And if that was the only thing that we had to gripe about, I'd be like, hey, do you know what? Thumbs up. Let's go. Like that's it. But it's all the other shit that really just taints it and makes it gross and and i just i just hate that so yeah I, that's all i have for my final thoughts I, um it just it just disappoints me what I, have, happened? I have a new final thought oh okay uh, is because it's out on pc i want the pc modding community to come up with a mod that removes all the microtransaction <laughs> pins from the game. do you I think that's even possible that theoretically it's semi-possible um <laughs> I'll, I would leave it up to the modding community at that point, but I would love love to see that. So I task any of you modders out there. <laughs> well, that's going to close the book on Diablo Immoral. But uh, <laughs> if you guys have any other beta games that you want us to try out, just let us know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this week. If you want to check out Jelly Knees, I'll have his Twitch and YouTube linked in the video description below, as well as the Viking Jedi his Twitch and YouTube, even though he hasn't really touched him in a while, will be linked. You'll find me here more. You'll find me here more yeah. than you'll probably find me on my channels just, at this just point. Look so, here. Just look forward So here. just hit that like and subscribe for Mangoose. <laughs> but for now, this is the beta mail <laughs> signing up. You guys have a good one. <sighs> oh, fuck. I didn't hit start recording. Mangoose. Special shout out to channel members, I Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Raven, and Blastoise King.